So now you're ready, after you have your two feet and your two arms, we're going to go ahead and attach the two arms first. And you want to use the same colored yarn. So I'm going to be using black to attach this one. You want to make sure that you have enough yarn on your upholstery needle to go through both arms and the body twice. Before you start, you want to make sure that your paw is facing up. So you want it facing up, you don't want it facing down. So after you have it facing up, you're ready to enter the side of the arm. And you want to go towards the top. So I'm going to go about one, two, three, four, five down and right in the center. And then you want to go through and out the opposite side, center, at the same level. So make sure that you're at the same level. And then just bring the yarn through. And make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. Now you're ready to enter the body. Now for this part, you want to line up where you exited. So here's where I exited, and here's the paws facing up. You want to line it up with the body to see where you want to enter the body. And I usually line up the arm with midline with the ears. And then the top of the leg, I line up with the neck. So then, once you find where you're going to go in, and mine is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just beneath the eighth round from the neck. And then you want to come out on the opposite side of the body at the exact same level and the same distance as far as the midline for the body. So you can see how I exited on the opposite side. Also you can see how it's very advantageous to have the upholstery needle. Then you just take and pull the yarn through the body. And you want to make sure that you leave about one to two inches of yarn between the arm and the body. And the reason why I do that is if you leave too much yarn, it'll get twisted. And you don't want your yarn to be twisted because you're going to cinch, you're going to pull on the loose yarn ends when you're finished and cinch the arms against the body. So you want to try your best not to tangle or go through your yarn strands. So now that I'm through the opposite side of the body, I'm ready to use the next arm. So again, you want to make sure that the paw is facing up. And then you want to go through the same level on this arm as you did with the opposite arm. And then come out on the opposite side at the same level as this one. And again, you want to leave about one to two inches between the yarn strands. I mean, the yarn strand, one to two inches between the arm and the body. Then you're going to go within one stitch where you exited. You're going to go back in. I'm going to go right below, about one stitch below where I exited the arm. And you're going to go through and come out about one stitch away. So I'm going to go right below where I entered the leg. So a stitch below. So I went a stitch below where I first entered the leg. And I'm being very careful not to cross my yarn strands or go through the previous yarn strand. Then you're going to go a stitch away, back in through the body. And I'm going to go about a stitch below where I exited the body. And then go through the body with your upholstery needle. Then I exited the opposite side of the body about a stitch below where I first entered the body with the yarn. Then 
Then I'm going to go right below where I exited the opposite arm and then I'm going to come out right below where I first entered the arm. And then you're going to repeat this whole process one more time. And then come back. So now you can see how I have four yarn strands on both sides between the arms and the body. And I have my loose yarn ends where I exited. And now you can pull on the loose yarn ends to cinch the arms against the body. Now if you meet resistance, don't keep pulling. Just let go and pull on one yarn strand at a time because your yarn will snap if you keep pulling against resistance. Then once you're happy with the placement of the arms, you can take and tie a knot. Then you can take the loose yarn ends, you can trim them. Make sure you leave enough to put onto your tapestry needle. And then you go right in where you tied the knot. And then come out on the opposite side of the arm anywhere. And then pull the loose yarn end through. And then that's how you bury your loose yarn ends. So now you have your arms in place and you're ready to attach the legs the same way. So for my legs, I always make sure that they are in line with the arms. So I usually have the back of the arms in line with the back of the legs. And then the other thing that I do is make sure that your panda can sit. I've seen, you know, if you put it too high, then your panda is going to, you know, it's not going to sit right. So you want to make sure that not only are your legs not too far back or too far forward, but that they're in line with the arms and also that your panda is sitting properly. So the bottom of the leg should be flush with the bottom of the body. So I went about the same distance that I did for the arms. So for mine, here's a one, two, three, four, it's actually about one, two, three, four, five, approximately five rounds down. And also, remember your paw has to face forward and then you're going down the center of the foot. So as far as mine, I counted from the magic circle on the bottom of the body and went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So just above the twentieth round and you can see that I'm in line with the dimple on the arm. And then just make sure that you're coming out on the opposite side at the exact same level. And then the rest is the same as the arms. So this is what my panda looks like after I've attached the arms and the legs. Here's the back of the head and then here are the arms on the side and what the legs look like. And you can see how my panda can sit easily. So this is what your panda would look like if you didn't make the dimple covers, but I'm going to be showing you how or what I did for the dimple covers. I'm also going to be showing you a different way to make the snout. Here's a close-up of his feet and his paws. And I think he turned out so adorable. And he is 17 inches tall while sitting from the top of the head to the bottom. Now his dimples, and dimples I mean when you move his arms, or the dimple, when you create the arm so that it moves up and down, it creates a dimple sometimes. Now it doesn't look bad, but I wanted to add something extra for this panda because it's going to be a gift for someone. So I'm going to make a dimple cover for mine. So for mine, these are the dimple covers that I made for the arms. 
You can see how gorgeous they turned out. And then for the legs, I have these slightly larger dimple covers and they look like a little pinwheel, but I love them. I love how they look and they'll really add an extra something to my finished panda. Now if you're wondering how I made these, for these dimple covers I used my Rosetta bonus pattern and let me show you the pattern. So this is a micro Rosetta hanging ornament that I made and I fell in love with the flower design. It's just simply gorgeous and a lot of fun techniques that I learned. And you can use this as a pin cushion or you can hang it on your Christmas tree. So I haven't decided yet what I want to do with mine. But you could see all the fun that you can have with the different colors. I used my leftover yarn from my Rosetta to make these. And then I, left, I used my sparkle yarn and white leftover white yarn to make the black and white pinwheels. And this, if you want your pattern, it's available for free download and it's on Lila Bjorn Crochet's site and I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name I think it's Tatiana but you can download this pattern and then on her site she has pictures that make it even easier to follow along so if you want dimple covers all you do is just make your own and I stopped after this round here so it looks like this and I just use my tapestry needle and I'm going to sew all around the border now if you want an easy dimple cover, you can go to my crochet squirrel tutorial and I actually show you how to make an easy dimple cover that's very simple. I wanted to make a more elaborate dimple cover to kind of make this more of an heirloom panda. So I'm going to place this, which it will be an heirloom anyway, even without these, but this just adds an extra more advanced crochet level look to my panda. So then I just place it right over the dimple. So I cover the dimple, center it over that area, and then I just sew all around the border. And this is what the dimple covers look like after I have them in place. Now if you have a more pronounced color change, you can take your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn and you can go through and just cover the white portion. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot. And then you can just take and embroider over the white portion. until it's completely covered. Then just tie a knot. and then just go right in where you tied your knot with your tapestry needle and come out anywhere to bury the loose yarn end. And then you can see how you have a nice transition there. Now if you like my dimple covers, I used Our Tribe yarn for this one with a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook and then I used the Red Heart Sparkle yarn and the leftover white yarn that we used for the body to make this one with a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. So now I'm going to show you how to make the tail. So you're going to use your white colored yarn, drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're just going to bring up a loop. Bring the yarn through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we've done before. And 
and then you're going to close the magic circle then just turn your work so you can make two single crochet into the first stitch and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. Now we're going to make one increase round, so we're going to increase the number of stitches one more time. Just take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and you're just going to make one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch. So now you should have 18 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, we're going to start to close. So you can go ahead and stuff the loose yarn end into the center. And if you want to put a little craft stuffing, you can, but I'm just going to leave mine empty. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And then we're going to start making the decrease rounds. So for the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. And then repeat that pattern all the way around. So one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So now you can remove the yarn marker and we're just going to single crochet two stitches together until we're almost closed and then we're going to slip stitch closed. So you just make as many single crochet two stitches together as you can. So I'm probably going to make just a couple more because I'm almost closed. I'll make one more single crochet two stitches together and then I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch it closed. Then you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over and just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook and then you just repeat that all the way around. One more should do it. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the back of the panda. Now you can fluff the tail so you have a circle on the opposite side and it's ready to be sewed in place. Now you want to sew along the inside because you want it to be poofy. So don't sew this portion. Leave that towards facing towards the back side and then you just want to sew around where you finished off. So you want to make sure that the tail is centered on the back side of the panda and then you just go right through the bottom portion of the tail and just sew it in place going into the body and then up into the tail and again I'm only sewing the bottom where I finished off the tail because I still want it to be poofy so I'm just going in and out of the tail and into the body just making sure that no one can pull the tail off that it's nice and secure and this is what my tail looks like after I'm finished it's nice and secure won't come off now you can add your own little label too if you want to I have this cute label that I had made up which is handmade with love by Helen May Crochet 